Hi, this is Professor Fernandez, and let's go ahead and solve the examples and other class notes in this lesson. So first thing I'm going to do is scroll down here. You'll notice that this file is a little longer than the one that uh, does not have the annotations on it because I want to leave lots of white space to make sure we can solve everything in the file. So I'm going to scroll down to the first example, example 1.1. Uh, and this one asks, which of the following folds are folds? So the first thing to notice here is that we're really asking a question about linearity, right? So we want to know which of these first order ODEs are linear. And then for those that are, uh, which ones are homogeneous and which ones are non-homogeneous? So the first thing I'm going to do is go back to the definition of what a first order linear ODE looks like and make a few observations there. Um, the first observation that I want to make here is that uh, all of the Y's are on the left-hand side. So if you encounter a first-order ODE and you want to figure out if it's linear or not, first thing you should do is you should put all Y's on the left-hand side. Um, that will help you to see if it, uh, the ODE matches this form. The second one is to make sure that dy over dt and y appear exactly that way. What I mean by this is if you notice the form of the ODE, um, the y on the left-hand side is by itself. So there is no y squared, there's no y cubed, there's no nonlinear factor of y. Same thing with dy dt. It's not like it's dy dt squared or sine of dy dt. Those would be all nonlinearities. So that's what I mean by appear exactly that way. There's no y squared, there's no dy dt squared, things like that. Okay. All right, so the last thing I want to mention here when comparing ODEs to this specific fundamental, uh, this uh, standard form, is to be on the lookout for the functions, in other words, the stuff that is supposed to not involve y. So a of t and b of t must not involve y. All right, so this may require some algebraic manipulation. We will see this in the examples that we're going to solve in a minute. So let's go ahead and scroll down to that. So we are back here. And let me first write down that standard form uh, that we're going to be comparing these ODEs to to make sure that we continue with that standard form. So that was dy over dt plus a of t y equals b of t. And then we'll talk about homogeneous and non-homogeneous once we get there. Okay, so then let's go to the first example, A. So if we compare the ODE for A to the standard form over here, we start seeing some similarities. That makes sense. So dy over dt, dy over dt looks good. Uh, and then here's the first wrinkle. So there is a y squared. So that is going to tell us already that this ODE is not linear. But let's say that we are trying to force it into being linear. So let me show you what would happen just to illustrate that there is absolutely no way that this ODE could be linear. What you might try to do is you might try to say, okay, I really want a Y in the Y squared slot. So I am going to divide the ODE by Y. Great. That gets you the Y there. 0 over Y is 0. But now you have a 1 over Y there and it does not match the standard form. So that is not going to work. So no matter which way you slice it, this ODE for part A is not linear. So we are going to say that this is not a fold. All right. So let's continue on to B. Um, let's look at that ODE. So what we see for B is we have a dy dt, but it's being multiplied by y. Um, and again, that is not matching the standard form that we want to compare the ODE to. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide by that Y and see what happens. If I go ahead and do that, um, here is my original ODE. And I'm going to divide by Y. So that gets rid of all the Y's that are multiplying all the terms, actually. 
And at this point, you might be wondering, what do I do now? And we've got the dy dt here, and then we have something that doesn't involve y, and then we have a zero. So let's make sense of this in the following way. We can move over the cosine t minus cosine t. And you might notice that I have left some room here, and that's because there's actually a y in here, except you don't see it because it's literally being zeroed out by that zero. So in this form, I can then go back and compare it to my standard ODE form and identify which of these things are the A of T function. There it is. And which of these are the B of T. There it is. Great. So this ODE is linear. So uh, we are going to put over here fold check. And then we wanted to find out if it's linear, is it homogeneous or non-homogeneous? So I'm going to scroll back up to the definition and talk a little bit about that for a second. So once you know that an ODE is linear, uh, let's erase this over here, then you look at the B of T term. So if this is zero, then it's homogeneous. Otherwise, if it's anything other than zero, it's non-homogeneous. So we're going to go back to our example and see what that B of T term looks like. So here we are. So for this um, example, we are looking at a B of T term, <clears throat> excuse me, that is uh, not equal to zero. So that means that the ODE is non-homogeneous. So we're going to put it over here, non-homogeneous. Great. So we have the first two done, and now we're going to look at part C. So let's go over here and rewrite the ODE a little bit. So you might notice that um, there's a sign Y here, and that's going to spell trouble in a minute. So let's go ahead and put the ODE down here. So that was uh, similar to the first two ODEs, but had a sign Y on the right-hand side. So again, we're going to compare this to our standard form up here in the red box. And everything is looking good if you start going from left to right. We got the dy dt. This is our a of t. And we got the y. And then this is where the issues start cropping up. So again, one of the things that I mentioned in the beginning, remember, was that we want all of the y's on the left-hand side for uh, comparison to our standard form. So we're going to try that here. So let's move over the sine y to the left-hand side. That way we have all the y's on the left-hand side. Uh, and you can see from here that comparing this to the standard form is just basically impossible. Uh, there is no way that um, I can somehow factor this term or combine it with this to get something of the form a of t y, to put it in this form. That's just not possible. So the reason it's not possible is because there's a pretty strong linearity, uh, non-linearity here, which is the sign of y term. So that really destroys all hope of this ODE being linear. So we are going to go back here and say that this ODE is not linear. So not a fold. Okay, so we have one more left to do, uh, and this is the part D up here, and it looks basically the same as part C, except the right-hand side is different. So let's take a look at that one. So part D, we have dy over dt plus cosine t times y equals y. So here we have a very similar situation, and I'm going to do a very similar manipulation. I have something on the right-hand side that involves y, so I want to get all the y's on the left-hand side. So I will subtract that uh, to the left-hand side and end up with something that looks like this. And then to simplify that even more to help us classify this ODE, I will factor out a y. So at this point, we can identify this thing as A of T. We can identify that as B of T. And we see that, indeed, this is only a function of T. This is only a function of T. In particular, it's the zero function. And then if we go back to our standard form, it does, in fact, match our standard form up here of a linear ODE. And the last thing, therefore, we have to figure out now that we know that this is linear is whether it's homogeneous or not. 
we do that again by looking at the B of T term. And in this case, B of T is equal to zero. So this is a homogeneous fold. So we're gonna say fold homogeneous. Uh, and that's it for this example. So we will keep going and solve the next example in the next video.